Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Hairsoft Hal, and today we don't have to review a Crytek, thank God. But today, folks, we'll be taking a look at a gun from a store that, well, whose product I'd already reviewed prior. And, of course, that product was the X95, if any of you remember that refurbished review. Yes, I did review the refurbished X95, and out of a whim, I reached out to him and said, Hey, I like what you do, I like your premise, I like your store, I like what you're doing. Could we possibly work together? Maybe have a little, uh, you know, cooperation? And that store, the owner of it, actually said yes! Yes, we could! And I'm actually pretty excited they did say yes. So, ladies and gentlemen, thanks, of course, to the cooperation with Mayan Store, Incorporated, TM. <laughs> uh, I don't know if they do have a trademark or not, but the, I just wanted to... It just felt like a good joke, like, you know, when you go to say Mayan Store, Incorporated, TM. You know, you just you gotta have that little TM there just to finish off the just to finish off that whole sentence. But either way, though, either way, they sent me a rifle that actually is pretty much their highest selling gun outside of, of course, their refurbished X95, which I've already done a review on. Please go check that out. And apparently, their ARX160 also refurbished. Hope to do a review on that one day. But ladies and gentlemen. Today's review is, of course, on their refurbished guns. Well, one of the refurbished guns, which I've been actually requested to do a lot of. No joke on that. Ever since I did the refurbished X95 and I left the link to their eBay page to actually buy the gun, a lot of people have been messaging me, asking me, Hey, could you do a review on the refurbished HK416? And yes, this is the refurbished HK416 economy from Umarex USA. However, unlike Umarex USA, Manstore Inc. Oh my bad, hold on, let me, I gotta redo that. Manstore Inc., brother! HK416 actually is a hell of a lot cheaper. Actually more affordable. Because the stock price for the, well, the economy HK416 is about, well, $94.99. BULLSHIT! Joking on that, that is actually the price tag for this thing's stock. However! Oh wait, hold on folks, I gotta use my voice. I gotta get into the voice. However, brother, the HK416 from Manstore.com. ManstoreHQ.com, oh yeah, brother. And but the cream will rise to the top, oh yeah. It is a whopping $45.99. And if you use my coupon code, Airsoft Allen, you get an entire 7% off your entire purchase. Oh yeah, brother. I'll take your entire stock. So go down there to the link down below to purchase your man store in Greenfurbish HK. Or your X95. Or even your ass wants to stay. And use my coupon code, Airsoft Allen, to get 7% off your entire purchase. Oh yeah. Just take all my money! No, oh, not this soon! Not this soon! Ah! I'm not joking when I say it. This thing is actually affordable. It's essentially within the $40 range. I like that. And it's it's refurbished, meaning it can take a lipo. And we're going to test that in the shooting test. But, what do you get with the gun? Well, Besides the gun, of course, none of this on here, because I just threw this on here because I wanted to make it look a little better and a little bit more appealing, because... Ironically enough, the HK416 is one of those guns that I actually don't mind, because... Well, the story behind the HK416, I made a joke out of. You see, the story goes that the Germans looked at the Armalite rifle, and then, of course, they just followed it, and it was like... Hey, Hans, the Sim 4 from the Americanas. What do you think about this? Yes, yes, I think we can improve it, yes. And so they took the M4 and the Armalite system as a whole and said, We can do better. Now, understand now, the Germans, I think, have the right to say they can do something better than Americans because if you look at the history of their firearms and the fact of they are fucking amazing, I mean, let's face it, Germany is the country that brought us not only the Mauser pistol, you know that Mauser pistol, the one that basically revolutionized automatic handguns and gave us the fastest shooting handgun of all time, including the fastest shooting gas blowback of all time? The Mauser M712? Well, yes, it was a 
results because Star was basically copying them, but you, you get what I'm trying to say. Not only did they give us the M712, not only did they give us the Mauser C96, they also made Zeluga. Zeluga, that is the most reliable handgun of all time. And I'm saying this as someone who actually will admit that yes, the 1911 doesn't do well in mud. Luger, however, ironically, if you watch InRange TV's mud test on the Luger, you'll see that yeah, no, it does. Uh, it, it, mud does not stop this thing. Nothing stops this thing. Okay, maybe rust, but even then, that's probably pushing it. But I hear a lot of you saying, Al. Are you trying to say that German weapon technology is better than American technolo weapons technology? Well, in response to that, I, I submit to the court of public opinion this clip right here. No, I'm not defending German technical superiority. I'm stating the fucking obvious. Company of Heroes 2 always has the best clips for all your needs. Anyway, back to the gun. And yeah, the HK416 has basically been there for... Damn near everything. Like, seriously. Name a game that doesn't feature the HK416. Be it Battlefield, Call of Duty, some knockoff game, or even some Tencent game, or even video game, or even movies, TV shows, damn near anything. And, yeah. The HK416 is now a popular icon, even though it does kind of look like every other fucking M4. But, let's face it. It's German technology at its finest. Either way, though. So what do you get with the gun itself? Well, you do get the gun itself with a six position, I believe. Hold on. Yep, six position stock, which you can remove this stock and put on any other AR stock you want or really anything. Me personally, I might uh, do something with this. You get a charging handle, which reveals the version 2 gearbox, and yes, version 2 gearbox, meaning that you can open this thing up and you can replace it with a full-size version 2 gearbox if you want to, uh, closing that up, as well as a V2 style hop-up. Moving down, you get a 280 round high cap, which we will get to the magazine, capa magazine compatibility in a bit. And then you have the four plastic rails, but they actually are secured on there, which I do like. Moving forward, you have the 14mm negative threading under this plastic birdcage flash hider, which is bolted in place by these two pins, so you're going to have to take a Dremel, Dremel out this a bit, all that. You do get some front iron sights, which this one you can remove, this one you can remove, which... This one is not on Man Store as a whole. I'm just saying this is a minor gripe to HK. Or my bad, not to HK, to Umarex USA. You know you could provide the actual iron sights for the 416, not these cheap iron sights. I'm just saying, you know, I mean, the HK416 does have some pretty cool MP5 style sights, or at least some, uh, or at least the iconic HK sights. Why in the hell are you basically making it so people have to go buy aftermarket parts just to be able to put the HK style sights, iron sights on here? Which, of course, yes, I am definitely going to do that because I want an actual HK gun. Or at least as close to an HK gun as I possibly can. Hmm, moving over to the right side, you have your fire selector, which of course is safe, semi auto, and of course rock and roll. And then finally, you have your magazine release. Now, the one head-scratching thing I have on this is the inclusion of a bayonet lug. Now understand, I'm not against having bayonet lugs on guns. <laughs> not at all. I'm, I'm actually all for bayonets and airsoft, if done properly. Even though US Airsoft says otherwise. But here's the thing. Um, the barrel is too damn short. You see, the barrel is too short for the actual bayonet to go over, which this will accept an M16 style bayonet that you may see on my M4 over here. But the barrel is too short for the actual bayonet to properly be fit on there, so that way if you hit something, the bayonet doesn't go flying off everywhere else. The bayonet is going to stay on there. It, or, my bad, the bayonet is not going to stay on there. It's, it's puzzling. It's questionable. I don't understand your reasoning behind this. It is illogical. Moving on. Now, this is wired to small Tamiya, and uh, when you remove the stock, of course, how you get to the battery is you push down on the stock itself and just lift up. 
and you expose your small Tamiya wire, which once again has been refurbished to take lipos, and we're going to have fun with that. I'm definitely going to have fun with that when the quarantine finally lifts, and yes, I am filming this during the uh, quarantine, so yay. Aside from that, putting this back on. Now, besides the gun itself, in the packaging, you actually get a pretty sweet battery setup. And when I mean pretty sweet battery setup, I mean you get not only a Elite Force Smart Charger, which, thank you for that, manstore.com, I'm really happy you did that, as well as e-bike brand T-Energy LiPos, or not LiPos, uh, T-Energy batteries, which of course are 9.6, 16-hour ma, which, when I went to charge this, found out these were already charged, so I don't know if Manstore Inc. did that for me automatically, but uh, I thank you for that, I really do. However, the test we're going to use, or at least the battery for the test we're going to use, is of course a Titan Energy LiPo 11.1 volt 2600 ma. Oh yeah, we're gonna have fun with this. We're gonna, we're definitely gonna put, we're gonna push this to the limits essentially. Now I did say earlier about the magazine. Now of course this does take a standard style mag, and this is in fact if research is to be corrected, an actual 280 Elite Force high cap, if research is to be corrected. Because, here's the thing, the gun that, once again, Elite Force is based off of, I don't know why, is based off of a Double Eagle AEG. Double Eagle does make a, 6, a 614 AEG like this, where it does have an extendable stock and even a solid stock variant, and yes, one day we will review that, I promise you, my children, but gotta get the budget first and or manstore.com start selling those two, and they find it suitable to send me one. We'll see. Either way. Now, I don't know why I did that, because I was going to show you how to, what magazines this is actually compatible with. So let me go ahead and grab a couple magazines, and we're going to see what it's compatible with and what it's not compatible with. Alright, so let's start with something just a little simple. Let's start with the Stenag style magazine, shall we? So, Let's start with the VN style, the 20 rounder. This is a JG 20, or my bad, not JG. This is a SEMA 20 round. No, wait. I'm sorry, my brain's not firing all cylinders today, folks. This is a JG 20 round VN high cap. High cap in quotations, of course. Putting it into the gun. Okay, yeah, no, it does that, but it does not fall free because of the paint job. It will probably fall free if it was the snare and snag, but uh, that is something you might want to keep in mind. A GMP Stenag style, 30 round. That was definitely stiff, trying to press on that button, so keep that in mind. A GNG high capacity mag of 450. Will it go in? Ooh, okay. Okay, I'm going to have to literally do this, folks. There it goes. Yeah, it, it did not want to go in there at first, but it's in there now, and I bet you there's not going to be a bit of freeding problems, but uh, we're just going to have to wait and see. Uh, well, that was interesting. Now we're on to the PMAG style magazines. Uh, the first one we're going to go with is this, I think, Magpool brand or ANK brand magazine I got sent from a viewer. Uh, we're going to see if this actually goes in. So. Nope, it does not because of that little lip right there, but uh, it did seem to want to go in, so that is something uh, to look into, but you might have to shim this down a bit if you want to use this style of magazine. Next up, a GNP PMAG style. This is the Skull Frog brand. Uh, let's see if this will actually uh, work, shall we? Oh yeah, that went in first go. I only did the tap because I wanted to make sure it was actually secured in there, but it actually went in, and it wasn't as stiff trying to get the magazine out, so that, yeah, it'll go in there. Next up, another GMP Skull Mag. This one's the mid cap, a uh, 130 high cap, I think. I don't know why 130 would be considered a high cap, but it's definitely uh, near the 190, I guess. Once again, we'll see if this goes in. It does. Stiff getting out. Once again, it might be the paint because I did I did paint these magazines for uh, woodland environments, so uh, keep that in mind. 
Near to the last, a Hex Mag. Now, the Hex Mag I've found has worked in a lot, even a lot of AEGs. Uh, and it's actually fed pretty good in a lot of them, including the X95, that's probably that you can probably see behind me. So I'm kind of curious if this will actually feed properly and actually be good into the uh, 416. Yeah, no, it went in perfectly. And it's a little loose, so it might drop free. Also, it looks great in the 416, like it really does. Um, to the owner of Man Store, get some hex mags to take pictures with these guns, because that actually looks really good. Uh, drop in the magazine. It does want to come out, but not entirely. So it does drop slightly bit, but not all the way. Uh, keep that in mind, mind you. Finally, the 30 Bamf magazine from Evike. This is another P Mag. It's a uh, mid cap. I'm a little curious about this. So, let's put it in there. And that looks great in it. Hello! Do P Mags just look great in general in HK guns? Because if so, then um, I might see why people like, uh, like the 416. Either way, though, that definitely does look good. Like, let's see if it drops free. Yes, it does. Ooh, that. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm liking this. I might get more of these. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the magazine compat uh, compatibility so far I have. Now, this might work with a lot of other magazines. It might work great for a ton of others. I don't know. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below uh, what uh, what you think the ma this thing, the magazines this thing might take. Um, now, the only gripes I have about this so far is, of course, the stock. This is sort of a thing I don't like about this stock, is that it's a little wobbly. Uh, that's just that's just the gripe thing. I'm not going to use this stock because, in my opinion, the stock is a little too big for my scrawny ass. And it's just it's not really comfortable for me. That's just a personal thing, though. So, I might be removing this stock and putting on a different stock to actually uh, use this on, to actually use on this gun. Uh, moving on, though. I can't really think of anything else. I really can't. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this over to the chronograph and the uh, have this, well, more or less load up a mid-cap because I'm not going to use the magazine it comes with. I'd rather have consistent shooting. So we're going to load up a mid-cap of .2s and we're going to see what the FPS is out of this and then we're going to take it outside and see what we can do, shall we? All right, we're using Black Ops Point Two BBs for this test, and I have both batteries, the batteries that were sent with me, and of course the lipos that we'll be using. So, for this test, we are going to plug this up first with the batteries they send you, and we're going to see what results we get out of that. Now, let me just go ahead and fish this out of the actual buffer tube, which is a little bit of a pain in the butt, but you know what? It's just one of those things. Oh boy. This is what I don't like about that. There we go. Okay. Fair warning, the wires do get hung in the stock, so that's why I'm going to replace the stock. Either way, though, let's go ahead and insert this in. Well, the one thing I do like about the stock is that it's a little spacious for a lot of different batteries. I'm not joking on that. So let's just go ahead and extend that out a bit. There we go. Snake you in. And then close it up. Close up the battery space. And just a simple test fire to see if it's actually shooting. Full auto. It's not too bad. For the 9.6, we will be using the BAMF magazine. Like I said, this is loaded up point twos. Okay, it's secured in there. And we're going to see what we're getting on the chronograph. So, let's see what we're getting on the chrono of point twos. 213. 214, 216, 208, 215, 211, 212, 175, 178, 206, 208. So yeah, we're definitely getting a lot out of there, but uh, what I'm a little curious about, let me move stuff out of the thing here. Oh, I got a lot of stuff in here. I don't know why I have... Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. I'm using it to hold down the BB catcher. So, it's definitely within the low 200s, but in terms of it actually holding up to a higher 
with, with the battery in center, it's actually doing pretty good for it being a refurbished gun, as well as uh, the FPS. Now, what I'm a little curious about is the rate of fire. So, we're going to flip it to rock and roll mode, and we're going to see what we get on, on a 9.6. So, firing a couple bursts. 600 rounds a minute. And we're out. So, the current graph was reading 600 rounds a minute. That's what we were getting. Look at the bamf man left four BBs out. Now, let's go ahead and switch out the batteries because I'm a little curious what this will do on 11, on 11 1. So, let's go ahead and take out this battery and swap it out for the 2600 Ma 11 6 Titan. Now, this is the one thing I love about Man Store's batteries is that they are refurbished to take lipos. So, let's plug her up like I have right here. And we are going to see the power of Man Store's refurbished guns. Now, do understand I am a trained professional, so don't try this at home, kids. Yeah, me, a trained professional. That's funny. There we go. Now, we're going to be using the hex mag. Once again, we are using mid caps for this test, not high caps, because I want consistent test results. Now, Let's see if there's an FPS change with the LiPo. 207? 209? 207? 207? On semi-auto, we're getting 315 rounds a minute with 170 FPS in terms of semi-auto. So, let's go full auto and see what we're getting. A thousand rounds a minute on eleven on eleven one with two hundred nine feet per second. Once again, same thousand rounds a minute. Uh, that short burst we got eight hundred and fifty seven rounds a minute, and we're out. Once again, that man store reliability definitely shines. It really does. Make sure that it's clear. Okay. And let's just go ahead and remove the light bulb. Now, understand this doesn't have a MOSFET or anything in it. It's just been, from my understanding and from what my guys have told me, what Manstore did is they actually redid the wiring on this. So, you know, that's actually impressive. That really is impressive. For them to basically make a little economy gun like this with new wiring, basically be able to take a lipo. That's why I respect Manstore. That's why I love Manstore. And that's why I'm going to support Manstore to the day they finally close doors out of something stupid, probably. Which they're probably never going to close doors. I hope they never close doors. Either way, though. Let's go ahead and load up the magazines and take this outside because as much as I want to say I want to pump .25s through this, I have a limited number of .25s and I don't want to waste them. So we're going to load this up at .2s and we're going to see what the distance is on this and see how far we're actually getting with it. Shall we? Okay, we're outside with the refurbished HK416 with an 11 -1 LiPo in the stock. Why an 11 -1 LiPo? Because we want the best performance out of this thing. And while, yes, I'm using point .2s, they are Black Ops brand point .2s, and they haven't failed me yet. So, with the BAMF magazine, let's go ahead and see what she's doing. I've got the run cam right there. There we go. Let's go ahead and get the first shot out of the way, see if we have to adjust it. Now, you're wondering about the uh, big old optic right here. Once again, if you haven't understood what I've been saying in the past, my right eye is going bad. Or at least I think it's got a stigma in my right eye. So everything's kind of blurry in my right eye. So I need optics to see clearly past certain feet. Primarily 10 feet. I can't... Everything's blurry past 10 feet. So I kind of need optics in order to see better. Uh, I am going to go to an eye doctor once all this quarantine stuff's over with to get that eye checked, to get my right eye checked out. But uh, we'll see till then, all right? All right. Let's see what we're getting with this, shall we? 
Oh yeah, that needs to be adjusted. Uh, let's see here. Is it? I can see it. Okay, you know it's four that it needs to be adjusted. So let's adjust it forward a bit. It needs to be adjusted just a bit more. Good lord. Just a little bit more. Just a bit more. Yeah, that hop up needs to be broken in. I don't know what it is about the hop up, but it's just. You're seeing it too, right? Unless. Did I not adjust it correctly? Or is it backwards? Hold up. Folks, I'm gonna be right back. I need to, uh, I need to check something real quick. Okay, so I did an oopsie. Um, this isn't the fault of the gun. Um, the hop-up is actually good. Uh, I had forgotten that I had lubed the magazine a bit earlier. So there is lube inside the barrel that's causing the uh, BBs to not uh, fly as straight as they should. So, uh, look, kicking off my sunglasses a second. Okay, so it's forward for the hop-up. So let's just push it all the way forward. Yeah, there's lube inside the gun, so that is going to affect the BBs. Um, this is a good torture test, though, essentially. I've got four magazines. Two GMP, the one hex mag, and the BAMP mag. And we're going to test them to see if they feed properly. And we're just going to do that in semi-auto. And you're going to see the zoom cam footage of the ball. And we're going to try and work out the uh, lubrication out of the barrel, out of the system, essentially. So, uh, yeah. I've got the hop-up turned all the way on, so we're just going to watch as the BBs, uh, I'm going to speed up this footage, though, so you can actually see the, uh, yeah. One magazine, and they were going farther that time. Second magazine. The BBs are going further now. Third magazine. Reaching out beyond 100 feet, by the way. Final magazine, semi auto. This is a 30 round mid cap, and we're going to blow through those 30 rounds pretty damn quickly. So, now that we're actually getting the distances that I knew this thing could get, let's, uh, let's see how it goes. I thought. Oh yeah, that's right. This is the magazine that had the lube in it, so that's definitely, uh, yeah. There it goes. That's actually impressive. I'm not gonna lie. So this is reaching out 100 feet. If there wasn't lube in the barrel at its full hop, mind you, of 0.2s, this thing could easily reach out to about 115, 120. Again, if I did not have lubrication in the barrel and I didn't and I wasn't lubing my magazines at the time and hadn't completely had a brain fart and forget that, oh yeah, there's lube in the magazine, so the lube's probably going to get inside the barrel in the hop up. So yeah, that's my bad. 
on the on the, yeah. Uh, yeah the way though. Okay, she's still going. And what's funny is that through the whole thing, the motor grip area is slightly warm. It's not hot. It's not like extremely hot. It's just slightly warm. And that's on full auto, mind you. I wasn't intentionally trying to break the gun. I wasn't intentionally trying to do like a like a uh, meltdown video. But the fact that this thing held out through three 135 round mid caps and one 30 round mid cap, you can do the math there. Should tell you exactly how good this thing is, especially running off an 11.1 lipo at its peak performance. I might actually run. I'm. What am I saying? I might actually. I am gonna run this gun in the game. Oh, 0.25s of course, because you know, 0.25s peak accuracy. After I do a redneck flat hop in this bad boy, yes, I'm gonna redneck flat hop this bitch, and I'm gonna see how long the barrel is on this, so I can actually get the tight bore in a barrel because. Like I said, all this is essentially version 2 parts in this, so you can turn this into a sleeper gun, which is what I'm going to do. Especially replace the gearbox. I'm definitely going to replace the gearbox in this bad boy. Anyway, let's go ahead, take her back inside, and give our final verdict, shall we? In terms of performance, like I said before out there at the shooting test, if I had not put lubed in the gun, if I had not put lube inside the gun or even the magazine itself, the BBs would have went a lot farther. So that's a my bad on my part. But in terms of peak performance, this gun will actually get those 100 plus foot ranges, which is actually not that bad for a little economy gun. And since it does have a standard V2 style hop up, an M4 style hop up, you can actually replace it with a flat hop, and yes, you can actually replace the inner barrel, which is what I'm going to do, mind you, with a, well, with a Type 4 inner barrel, once again, which is what I'm going to do, because I'm going to turn this into an absolute sleeper gun. Now, I have, prayed this, I have praised this a good bit, and I've even praised the fact that Manstore.com, uh, well, Manstore Inc.'s, Refurbishing allows their refurbished guns to handle lipos like an actual standard AEG. And I've said this before in the X95 review, that these guns, these refurbished airsoft guns, are definitely worth it if you want to buy one for not the standard price tag, and it's already refurbished to basically use a lipo. Now, I do have gripes about the gun. And this is aimed towards Umarex USA as a whole and not Manstore Incorporated. Umarex USA, you have had this out for a while now. Why not go ahead and make an updated version of it? And before everyone starts going nuts in the comments, hear me out. And you might actually understand where I'm coming from. This gun is an economy-friendly gun, yes. And yes, it does do pretty damn well. And it is actually pretty good. However, it is now 2020. An update version of this would actually be really good. Make it so that way the upper it is once again all polymer, so you can still cut on cost. But make it to where the upper and lower are separable. Do it like your economy-friendly M4, essentially, or your starter M4, which is essentially your Elite Force M4. Do it like that. Do it to where the upper and lower can be separated. Do it to where it has a threaded barrel, it has metal, but the rest is all polymer. Do it to where you can actually remove the pistol grip and all that. Give us that $100 value that you're pushing on its stock, where Manstore.com, or Manstore Incorporate, I mean, has basically said, oh, hold up there, Jack, that's a bit of a, that, that's a highway robbery. We can do better. And they did. They've made it to where this can take a lipo, and it's under $50, while you are still charging the damn near $100 price tag. Manstore Incorporated is doing your job better. Umrex USA, fix your shit! Another thing is, have a dust cover, have the mock bolt in there. The mock bolt, the dust cover, the mock dust cover that's on the bolt, or at least the mock bolt. So when we go to pull the charging handle, we have that satisfaction of that mock bolt. Because just this as a whole is not enough. It really isn't. And finally, the big one. Give us a better buttstock! This thing is wobbly as all hell, and the way it's designed is asinine, 
at best because you have this little piece of plastic right here that is blocking the ability and you can bet that I'm just basically going to go in there and chop it out because that is an asinine design. What in the hell is wrong with you, Rex USA? I know you were copying the Double Eagle uh, 416, but even the Double Eagle 416 is probably a little better. Look, I'm just saying that if you're going to charge $100 for this, actually give us a $100 Economy 416. Actually give us something that we can upgrade on, that we can work on, because we've had this for a while now. I mean a while now. Give us an updated version of it so we can actually have a little bit more fun. I'm not asking for much, Umarex. I'm not. All I'm asking is you take this, you go back to the design board, and you ask the question, how can we make this actually worth the $100 price tag? That's all I'm asking, Umarex USA. That's all I'm asking. With that small rant over, what are my final thoughts on this? The final thoughts on the Manstore Incorporated HK416 is it is worth it. It is worth that $50 price tag. It is good. It can take a lipo. You saw the torture chest, the mini torture chest I did, and the only thing that ever got hot was the motor grip area, and it did not exceed the certain heat limit. It worked fantastic. And like I said, you can bet that I'm definitely going to be turning this into a sleeper gun. Because I'm definitely going to do some fun, evil things with this. I'm going to pop in a Type 4 air barrel. I'm going to pop in a flat hop. I'm going to pop in a full metal gearbox into this thing. I'm going to do a lot with it. And if I can't put a full metal gearbox in there, that's fine. I'm just going to pop in the Type 4 air barrel and the flat hop because even stock... This still does amazingly well. And I love it. I love every bit of it. I love everything Manstore Inc. has done to this gun. And Manstore Inc., you have my full support and my full backing. And you can bet I will do anything and everything in my power to work with you guys to help spread these amazing products you have on the market right now for the common man. And before we get out of this, my final verdict on the Manstore Incorporated's refurbished 416 HK is no more, no less than a 9 out of 10. A must own. It misses my legendary rating because of the manufacturer themselves not exactly giving more worth to it. Now, am I saying this is a 10 out of 10 gun? If they do the changes that I asked of, such as actually making it a essentially like a GNG combat machine or their own Elite Force starter M4, their competition M4 that's like under 120 I believe right now, that round $100 price tag would make sense. And not just a copy of a Double Eagle AEG. Either way though. Thank you all for watching. As always, I've been Airsoft Al, the common man's airsofter who shows off awesome guns that's actually within the common man's bunny, uh, budget range so you can consider getting them. Which, speaking of which, if you want the AEG that I just reviewed right now in this video, go down to the link down below to Manstore, to ManstoreHQ.com or their eBay page and consider getting this gun. Click on that link. And if you use my promo code AirsoftAl, you will get 7% off your entire purchase. So, thank you all for watching. As always, I've been AirsoftAl. And if you like what I do, consider donating to our PayPal. It's that little link down below, below the man store stuff. And if you like this video, consider liking. If you hate this video, consider disliking. And leave your comments in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, all that good happy jazz. And I will see all you lovely people in the next video. Till next time. Later.